What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Skews Day to you. It's April 2nd, 2024. I'm Trey. That's Mark. How you doing there, Mark? Good, buddy. Uh, we talked about Easter today. How was your Easter? Did you, have a, did you find some eggs? <laughs> we were moving the whole day. So at mm. the end of the day, I gave my sons each a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup rabbit and said, Happy Easter. Sorry you had to spend it moving. But you know, they're old enough. They're 11 and 12. They need to learn how to move couches and shit like that. So it's fine. So yeah, we didn't do that. I mean, I'm, you know, it'll surprise no one to hear. I'm not the biggest Easter fan. I feel like even before I like fell completely out of love with the Lord at 11 or whenever that happened, even before that, I never really fucked with Easter that much. I don't, I don't know. I don't care too much for pastels. Eggs hit. I like eggs, but rabbits plus eggs. I don't know. It just, you know, it was kind of where, never my thing. <laughs> where do you stand on peeps? Because I always hated peeps. There's like, it's like, it's like, the, it feels like the texture, like you're eating an actual baby chick. And I just don't. <laughs> do well, I've like always, it. I've heard, and it's funny because I have heard this for years, but I have never really tried it because I've never been a peeps fan too. So I've never cared enough about this advice to put it to the test. But I've heard that like, apparently if you let peeps get a little bit stale if you leave them open for a couple of days they get a little bit stale the texture greatly improves and they hit harder that way but i don't know also i want to let everybody know this is weekly skews it wouldn't be weekly skews if we weren't having some minor technical issues we got some problems with mark's microphone so he's on a secondary mic right now so if he sounds a little different that's why but we're doing our best i'm also glad mark that it happens to be april 2nd instead of april 1st mm -hmm. because like if we're doing the show on April 1st, I feel the whole thing would be coated by this paint, this, this, you know, this tinge of like, is this real? Did this happen? Because that's what mm -hmm. April 1st is, which I find annoying. So yeah, uh, I, I feel about April. Over. <laughs> I feel about April Fool's Day, how you feel about religious holidays. Uh, it's just like, yeah. this is just a bunch of bullshit. I also uh, do. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, couple things before we get to the show. Uh, Ted Cruz sits on whatever committee that would like handles like like must approve FAA bills, and he instead tried to sneak in a provision that would require lawmakers to get police escorts through airports. This is three years after he got caught fleeing to Cancun. So Ted Cruz tried to pass the "Don't Spit on Ted Cruz in the Airport" act, uh, <laughs> which I found hilarious. Uh, Oklahoma's GOP Attorney General asked the court to be able to slow down their pace of executions from every night. Like they, they were trying to do 25 in three years and they got approved to like only do once every two months. This is for the mental health of the people that work at the correctional facility. Right. And it turns out every 60 days is still way too hard on them because they're still getting PTSD and depression and shit. So he asked them to expand it to 90 so they can have more time to recover between, you know, having to kill people. Right. And the judge told them to quote, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you would think that, like, that should be indicative of something to people. The the fact that, like, corrections officers who work in having to execute prisoners on death row, regardless of whatever their crimes were, that they are struggling uh -huh. mightily with the burden of having to do that and are asking, uh -huh. can we please just do, can we please kill a person once every three months instead of once every two months? And America's like her Oklahoma's at, at least is like, hell no, goddamn suck it up. Like that whole thing, I feel like should send a message to some people about the they, reality of capital punishment, but I'm sure that's not gonna actually happen. Yeah, the the I mentioned like I feel like it's under every time we talk about the death penalty, I try to bring this up how hard it is and the people that are that we task to do it for not, you know, great wages. <laughs> not that the wage is the most important part of it, but I'm saying like, you know, it's like everything costs. And the the idea that like that what they're Oklahoma's trying to do is like they're literally trying to kill half the people on their death row in three years. Like that was their goal. It's like we gotta clear half these people out to make her all this inventory must go. Come on down to crazy death penalties. Right. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, everything must go. Uh and it's like the judge who told him to suck it up, he's like a weird psycho. Like he's he has like a bunch of rulings that he put the N-word in. Now like fully spelled out, hard R and everything. And he's quoting people. And like for like sentencing and stuff, but we know what you don't have to be doing that. <laughs> like he just likes it, uh, all these people are such fucking weirdos, man. Um, another another legal news: a judge ruled last week the Georgia Republican Party's first vice chairman, a guy named Brian K. Pritchard, violated state election laws when he voted nine times while serving probation for a felony check forgery. Mm -hmm. um, now. That sounds more ridiculous than it is because what he did was he didn't complete his probation uh, uh, 
he started voting in 2009, but didn't complete it until like 2012. So it wasn't nine times in one election. I was trying, right. I was hoping that was it because that would have been really fucking funny. Right. But it was spread out over like three years. Uh, but anyway, he's the guy that won't, won't surprise you. He's a big election denier who's really into election fraud uh, in every sense of the word. Uh, <laughs> um, was it was it a deal where he's like, I'm, you know, He's a felon, but I'm sure he considers himself an unjust situation when it comes to being a felon. And also, he's uh, a white man, so like in his mind, he was just voting whenever it was time to vote because he should have the right to vote. He wasn't considering what the uh -huh. laws actually were, or was uh -huh. it him maliciously voter frauding? You he know said what I'm he said he was just confused about his probation status, which I don't know how you're confused about your probation status because you got to go meet with your probation officer regularly. But anyway, it's like you're right. It's like we talk about this a lot, but like. A crimi criminals aren't people who commit crimes. They're people who look different than me. And yeah. why doesn't the judge understand that? <laughs> right. Right. Uh, uh, update of the uh, the Singaporean boat that crashed into uh, uh, the uh, the bridge in Baltimore last week. We talked about um, the company that owns it just cited a law from 1851 uh, 1851 maritime law to cap their liability at 44 million dollars, which is like. The phrase 1851 maritime law is funny to me because under 1851 maritime law, it's probably legal to have like no uh, no less than three sex slaves per ship or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so <laughs> capping the liability. Okay. So they want to cap at $44 million. They right As of right now, they're already two to $4 billion in insurable losses. It doesn't count cost larger economy. Just insur insurance claims are going to be filed. Uh, six people dead. And they want to cap it uh, 44 million. Uh, also, uh, the company responsible for the bridge collapse that ran that ship blocked its employees from reporting safety concerns to the Coast Guard and is now being sanctioned by federal regulators for violating whistleblower protection laws. And so with all the conspiracy theories that have risen up around this, what drives me crazy about conspiracy theories is they ignore the obvious ones for ridiculous ones. And right. if you want a conspiracy theory, here it is. You've got a company that punished dissent to escape regulation and then when your corner cutting kills people, you've already rigged a tort law, so you pay pennies for your malfeasance. <laughs> right. Right? Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Like, yes. We need more and more stringently enforced regulations, and that would help. But the idea that they use money in a plutocracy to skirt those regulations, which ultimately leads to shit like this, I don't know if that's boring to them. I guess it just doesn't fit their narrative or whatever, but it's got to be like, no – Joe Biden is uh, mm -hmm. woke Magneto. That's what, yeah. that's what actually happened. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Woke Magneto is what happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pet petitioning the government re to redress your grievances with regard to a lack of regulation about big corporations, that's boring. So let's make it me like aliens, right. right? Let's make it Q stuff or whatever. It's just like, a, like China hacked the ship's navigation. It's got to be that, right? right? It can't be. Anyway, uh Another update, we talked last week about um, Trump Media, uh, Trump so Trump Social was owned by Trump Media, merging with some like other company. They put a bunch of uh, uh, cash in Donald Trump's pockets uh, as he needs to pay his bond uh, to keep his properties from being repossessed, uh, confiscated. Uh, so the, the ruse has already fallen apart because unfortunately Trump Media had to release financial reports. So the, the stock fell 21% yesterday and Trump lost a billion dollars in paper money in a single day. Uh, <laughs> uh, what they had to reveal was that they disclosed a fifty-eight million dollar net loss in, in twenty twenty-three for just four point uh, on just four point one million dollars in total revenue. Uh, it also lost momentum. Like the, their financial situation is getting worse. It only generated seven hundred and fifty grand in fourth quarter revenue last year. Now, so see like, here, like the only place I'm confused about this is I I thought this was like I thought all that that you just said was like known before the IPO or whatever like I remember last week when it was coming they were talking about the launch of it and it, and it happening people were saying like this company's only got x million in revenue again whatever I thought like mm -hmm. this makes it sound like this came out and was surprising to people which caused the stock to plummet but I thought everybody already knew it was or shit to begin right. with right because you had their, they had their fourth quarter. You had their like, you know, reports from like or other quarterly disclosures, right? But this is just the most recent one that showed it wasn't getting better. In fact, it was getting worse. Uh, but like, it's a meme stock, so none of this like it dropped like, it, like it was back up three dollars today. Like, it started it soared to like seventy one dollars, dropped like fifty one out of like today. It's back up to fifty four. But like, the thing about this is like, it cemented meme stocks as a thing that exists in reality because the term wasn't invented until twenty twenty one. We talked about the, the the Reddit GameStop shit. That's probably my favorite episode we ever did was trying to figure out what the hell was going on there and making fun of the rich people that were losing their shirts because they were getting fucked with. 
but <laughs> the idea that you could do meme stock stuff as a donation to a right. wealthy guy who's just cash strapped is like, yeah, I'm not sure the the the, the uh, uh, you know the SEC ever foresaw any right because that's kind of I mean that's kind of what this is right it's like a workaround for being able to give money to Donald Trump essentially mm. without mm. you know any of the restrictions that come with the formal process of doing it for political uh, mm -hmm. reasons or whatnot but I'll, but also like correct me if I'm wrong and I'm very possibly am because I'm so Wall Street dumb but like. Mm -hmm. I know the value of this is down a billion dollars today, but like, even if it falls further, the cliff is pretty far to where he would actually have some kind of significant loss from this, right? Because it's all just kind of made up to prop him up financially, isn't it? So even if the value falls, it still is kind of starting from nothing because it's all just mystical hoodoo Harry Potter shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, even if it falls further, he's still going to come out yeah. in the black as a result of it. So he got someone to give him a hundred seventy-five million dollar bond. I think a guy's like a subprime auto lender or whatever. Some guy like like, it's like his company. Uh, but I think he put the stock up for collateral. So if the stock drops far enough, he could have to find some other money to just to, 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 to you know to not to not to keep his bond. But this guy's doing. He's got to give him a bond as a favor. So I doubt he would call it in. But anyway, so two guys are already maybe headed to jail over this deal. <laughs> it just happened last week. Uh, these two guys were, I guess, friends with a guy, the, a guy who owned the company that merged with Truth Social, got, got in trouble for insider trading and also money laundering on something, uh, something else. But like, they tried to do a $22 million deal to profit off their insider knowledge and immediately got caught. I just think it's so funny that these guys, rich people can get away with almost anything and they're all still constantly getting arrested. Right. <laughs> Right. That I, that kind of makes sense, though, I think. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, they get more and more emboldened by that fact, like the fact that they get away with so much, you know, at a certain point, you stop believing you'll ever get called to task for anything. So you mm -hmm. try more and more ridiculous shit. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, you know, good. <laughs> like, I hope that happens that's more. That's Trump. Trump's whole complaint about selective prosecution is like, what do you mean I'm in trouble for this? I've been doing this illegal shit my whole life. And exactly. Now <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I think on our Patreon episode, I think we showed a clip of Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank or whatever. Mm -hmm. And his whole, he's like furious on Fox News on this big tirade about it. He's like, listen, all these things that Trump is, that they're like trying to charge Trump with in court. Every single financier and real estate developer in New York, on Wall Street, has been doing this for 40 years, and it was never a problem before. And it's like, well, well, maybe it should be, <laughs> you know, but yeah. that's kind of indicative of what you've we're saying. Almost, you've almost figured it out, Kevin. You've almost figured it out. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Producer Matt is with us doing our thing. This is Weekly Skews. As a reminder, I want to let you know a couple of things real quick. Number one, if you want to see me do stand-up comedy live, go to TreyCrowder.com. My first, my next upcoming shows are in Vancouver. I'm coming for you, Canada. The Southwest part, anyway. Followed immediately by Seattle and then a lot of other shows after that. So go to TreyCrowder.com and y'all please come and see me. Also, on that website, you can find a Link to me and Corey's book, Round Here and Over Yonder, a comedic travel guide. It's a fun-filled romp across these contiguous 48 states and England and Scotland as well. So check that out too, TreyCrowder.com. And lastly, if you enjoy this program and would like to show your support, you can do so by signing up on Patreon. Go to WeeklySkews.com slash more, or you can just go on Patreon and search for my name. Either way works. $5 a month gets you access to full-length bonus episodes like the one we just referenced where we talked about all this shit with the Trump stocks and all kinds of... We cover things that don't come up on the main show or happen in between or just things we want to talk about. We do skew and A's. That was the most recent one, actually. We uh, we take questions from y'all and answer them. It's a lot of fun, so if you want some more skews in your life, sign up on Patreon and accomplish that task and support the show in the process now as for the show tonight it's a very exciting topic for me the just announced war on easter can't wait to sign up as a three tour veteran of the war on christmas i look forward to offering my services to this righteous and just cause but yes the biden administration in case you missed it matt is trey frozen for you or am i frozen Okay, so Trey's frozen. 
Uh, Trey was announcing, I don't know if he's even coming back. All right, so, uh, <laughs> all right, tonight we're talking about the war on Easter, as Trey was saying. Uh, uh, the Biden administration did absolutely nothing but post on social media, uh, like a three-sentence thing, saying something nice about trans people about it on a day that happened to be Easter. You know, they also posted a bunch of nice stuff about Easter, because Joe Biden's very Catholic, and the world went to hell in the conservative media because fear. That's what we're talking about. Hopefully, Trey will be back in a minute. He says he thinks he's back. Uh, you want let me know that? There he hey, is. Am I back? Yeah, Sorry I was just about, about to call for the Daily Dumbass graphic. You can I go ahead know, and do it. no idea what happened. I don't know where I got mm -hmm. cut off either, but let's just go ahead and start with the Daily Dumbass. Sorry about that, y'all. Matt, hit the graphic, please. <laughs> Nights, DD. Anyone who thinks foreign spies can see through this impenetrable disguise is from 60 Minutes. Continue in a moment. One of them is Carrie. We're disguising her and not using her last name because she's still an FBI agent working in counterintelligence. She says in 2021, she was home in Florida when she was hit by a crippling force. And bam, inside my right ear, it was like a dentist drilling on steroids. That feeling... Okay. Cut, pause it, Matt. That's just in a wig. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, like, to try to give, I guess, the FBI and 60 Minutes the benefit of the doubt. Is this some kind of, like, ostensibly, is this some, like, Mission Impossible type shit where they've, like, used the power of prosthetics? Because I'll say, Mark, I don't know if you've been on TikTok recently, but there's some people out there doing wild stuff with makeup. Makeup technology has come a long way. I saw a white girl turn herself into Kobe Bryant the other day. It's wild using just makeup. So I didn't know if like, well, you can also use filters. They, they could, they, they could use a Snapchat here. filter on her and it would have been more effective than whatever this is. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. all right. So 60 minutes to this big piece, they touted it as like the real truth behind Havana syndrome. Now Havana syndrome, if you guys like, this is one of those things where I'm just fascinated with silly spy shit. Okay. This, you, this, this fake disguise, if you're not watching, if you're, if you're listening to the podcast version, I thought they were going to blur her face or something, but they literally just put her in a, anyway. So, Vanna syndrome is this thing that the uh, parts of the intelligence community came up with to explain why a bunch of spies overseas were having like headaches and fainting spells and stuff. Um, the ones in Russia were the most funny to me because they were like, we got to drink vodka all night with Russians. Then the next day we had a headache. I'm like, yeah, that's, probably, that's definitely a, 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 the, what they're saying is like, it's like a, like a sound weapon that Russians are shooting at embassies and like, and CIA, uh, uh, you know, housing and so forth. And, I'm gonna. That last time we talked about this, I got messages from people who were like, uh, "Think I'm like being a pro Russia or something," <laughs> or mm -hmm. somebody. The one that made sense, a guy was like, "He's like a guy was like, my husband works for like the State Department and he's had really bad headaches and the bill that Congress passed to give medical benefits to people with Havana syndrome is going to help." And I'm like, "I'm for everyone getting health care. The reasons you got it are, are are not have nothing to do with that, right? So I have no." problem with that i don't say that straightforward so but i thought this havana syndrome stuff had been solved because in 20 in march of 2023 an, intel, an uh, intelligence community got assessment from seven agencies determined it was quote very unlikely that russia or another country is behind the attacks instead the report claimed it was quote probably the results of factors that did not involve a foreign adversary such as pre-existing conditions conventional illnesses or environmental factors or like you know stress ptsd that kind of stuff uh and then that then earlier i thought it was fully dead because earlier this month there's a report from the National Institutes of Health that said they did not find evidence of brain injury in people reporting Havana syndrome symptoms. And by, this is the only thing that Russian intelligence and the CIA can agree on is that this aren't Russian, these aren't Russian brain lasers doing this, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes, I mean, I, you know, I don't know what's actually going on here or not. I'm sure they got all kinds of wacky shit out there in the world of espionage and whatnot these days. But I like... You know, I know that, like, you you can go on WebMD and see something, like, because you got, like a, 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 like, a weird ringing in your ear or whatever. You read it, and then next thing you know, you're like, I have cancer everywhere or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know what I, mean? I feel like it feels, if you start hearing that this is a thing and you're in one of these positions and you're having headaches, I, I, you know, I have headaches, but you start having headaches in this context and you start thinking, holy shit, I got Russian brain lasered. That, right. It feels like a human nature thing to me for mm -hmm. to that for people to be susceptible to that type of thinking, you know. 
Dude, early in COVID, I was out jogging and I got a leg cramp and my head was going, oh, COVID causes blood clots. I'm about to have a heart attack and die. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. I got, a leg, I got a leg cramp from jogging. Uh, so the sources in this, because officially the intelligence community, I don't t- trust them at all, but like they usually err on the side of call, urging like, you know, more war. So if they're telling you there's no reason for war here, I usually sit up and be like, okay, well, I should at least pay attention. So the sources for this, the main one was a guy named Gregory Ed Green, who's a former uh, military intelligence officer uh, who oversaw an intelligence in the Havana, Havana Syndrome. And they basically quit when everybody disagreed with them. And then he founded a nonprofit called, no, it's a company, sorry, called Advanced Echelon, uh, whose company provides care for Hannah Syndrome, Havana Syndrome survivors. So what I'm saying is this guy has a vested financial interest in there being Havana syndrome. Maybe it does exist, and his company's fighting the good fight, taking care of people who have it. I'm just saying he's making money off the, the idea of it existing. And that FBI agent who you watch, watch the interview with, she says she continues to suffer balance problems, headaches, and brain fog, um, uh, which is you know a common description of people experiencing anxiety. She also said their symptoms typically worsen at night. These are con- uh, common features of vestibular dysfunction. I'm reading here from a, a guy, wrote a, a skeptic who wrote about this. Um, he also said, uh, Pelly during the interview said she'd been treated for, quote, holes in her inner ear canals. While this could have been from a mysterious weapon, there is a more mundane explanation, uh, paralymphatic fistula that can be caused by barotrauma from changes in air or water pressure, such as from flying or scuba diving. Uh, and strenuous physical exercise can also trigger this condition as well as head trauma. So Occam, Occam's razor here. By the way, there are sound weapons. Governments all over the world use sound cannons to disperse protests. No one's just talked about one that's targeted enough to cause like brain trauma over a long distance while not affecting anything else around it. Right. Right. If it, 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 theoretically it could exist, don't know. But Occam's razor here, I think it's like three or four people that are convinced of something that no one else is convinced of. And they got 60 minutes to do a whole report on it. It's treated like a bombshell, and there's not a lot of there there. Well, so uh, see, even you reading through what you just read about this, like, possible rational uh, medical explanation for it, paralymphatic uh-huh. fistula that can be caused by barotrauma, which could come from many things, including strenuous physical, physical exercise. Just hearing you read that already in my head kind of had me freaking out. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, God, what if I go too hard on the bike? Am I going to get a fucking paralymphatic <laughs> fistula? Yeah. Caused by barrow trauma? I don't want to get uh, or, syndrome uh, accidentally. You know, it happens. Or is it some guy named Igor across the street with a sound sniper rifle shooting you in the head? Oh, yeah. 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 The <laughs> world may never know. But moving on, our first honorable mention for Daily Dumbass is one's own words for being remembered so that they can be brought up in opposition to you in the future. This is RFK Jr. on CNN. In, in 2000, um, Ralph Nader obviously was running, and you did an interview with NBC News just a few months before the election. You said this. There's a political reality here, which is that his candidacy could draw enough votes in certain key states from Al Gore to give the entire election to George W. Bush. And then you wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. You wrote, Ralph Nader is my friend and hero, but Mr. Nader's candidacy could siphon votes from Al Gore. Mr. Nader dismisses his spoiler role by arguing there is little distinction between the major party candidates and that Mr. Gore is compromised on too many issues. While I admire his high-minded ideals, his suggestion that there is no difference between Mr. Gore and Mr. Bush is irresponsible. (laughs) Dude. All right. So, like, look, I voted for Ralph Nader in 2000. I No shit. I lived in Texas. How come? Uh, I, 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 he was close to getting 10%. I thought it would have been cool for some, a third party to get 10% and get the automatic funding and the eligibility to get in debates in the next election. You know, it was like mm-hmm. one of those times where it was like, oh man, we could have a third party, right? right. Uh, Matt Producer Matt just te- put in the yeah. group chat that he voted for him in 2004. Look at you guys. I didn't know this about y'all. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I looked mean, at- in 2000, I wasn't old enough, but in 2004, I was firmly in the fuck George W. Bush camp, despite what some of y'all might think of a recent, we don't have to get into all that. Anyway, yeah, so he was never a, a viable option for me. But look at you guys trying to fight yeah. the two-party system, huh? That's yeah, helpful, I, I, suppose. I just thought it, I thought it'd be cool because it was a chance to actually change something for once. Like you know, what I'm saying like a, a third party getting told twelve percent. I understand the pra- practical effects like going forward that probably would have like fucked the country. But I was like 21 at the time. All right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so Ralph Nader when he when he said Ralph Nader was a hero of his, Ralph Nader at that point was an American hero, right? He'd spent his life fighting corporations who were killing people. 
all right? Uh, and he was a crank, but he was not this kind of crank. I want to show you RFK from a speech on the Washington Mall, I think like two years ago, if you got this clip, Matt. Alone. We'll be able to look at every square inch of the planet 24 hours a day. They're putting in 5G to harvest our data and control our behavior. Digital currency that will allow them to punish us from a distance and cut off our food supply. Vaccine passports. The minute they hand you that vaccine passport, every right that you have is transformed into a privilege contingent right. upon you. So a lot of dangerous shit going on there. But the I, I think the, the part that bugged me the most was like the that he's... <laughs> He thinks cryptocurrencies are the governments are for cryptocurrencies. They can shut off your wallet and eliminate your food supply whenever you act out or whatever, which is exactly the opposite of what's happening. Although if he turns off the crypto bros, his campaign's probably dead. Um, did you see he, who he picked as his running mate? Uh, yeah, Nicole Shanahan, right? The t uh, tech billionaire used to be married to uh, the Google guy and had an affair with Elon and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. She was married to Sergey Brin until she got caught having an affair with Elon Musk. Uh, she doesn't really like she's like a lawyer for a nonprofit. All her money comes from like the divorce, obviously. Yeah. And he apparently only picked her because she's rich and she can help fund his efforts to get on the ballot right. in more states. And she, right. although being a lifelong Democratic donor, apparently wanted to go along with this so she can be in the history books as a trivia question. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. But like the depths of weirdness of this guy, where I want to talk a little bit more before we get to the main segment about how this is going to be the weirdest election of our fucking lifetimes. Anybody that tells you they know what's going to happen is, is, is crazy. Because, like, this found this article from 2013, RFK's Sex Diary, His Secret Journal of Affairs. So he kept a, a journal where basically rated all of his sexual conquests. This is while he was married to his second Bro, wife. insane uh, to me. This reminds me of the quote from The Wire. It's like, you're taking notes on a fucking criminal conspiracy or whatever. This is like the married mm -hmm. man version of that. Not that I would ever do any of this anyway, but good Lord. Uh -huh. If you're going to be out philandering, throwing it around all over town, don't jot it down in a journal every night and keep it by the uh -huh. bed stand. You know what I mean? Like that's, that shit's crazy to me. Yeah. It's, even, so, it's way more elaborate than just that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Whole, yeah. He had a whole and system going. <laughs> he did. He would, uh, he would, uh, he recorded the names of each woman with numbers from one to 10 next to each entry. The codes corresponded to sexual acts with 10 meaning intercourse. Mary told a confidant. Mary was his wife, Mary Richard, Richardson Kennedy, who, by the way, found this diary, then got a DUI, then killed herself before their divorce could be finished. Um, uh, so there are 37 women named in the ledger, 16 of whom get tens. Uh, and November 13th of 2001, he recorded a triple play. The, the separate encounters, which he coded 10, 3, and 2, occurred the same day he attended a black tie fundraiser at the Waldorf Astoria for Christopher Reeves' charity, where he sat next to the Paralyzed Superman star, magician David Blaine, and comic Richard Belzer. Now, bro, he got th three different kinds of sexual pleasure at one charity event. I can't even get down to the gym. What's a, uh, this guy? He was 48 years old at the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's the part that's like, you're so aggressive. You're so, you're so desirous to cheat that you're doing things your body doesn't even want to be doing at that point. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like the, the weekend Trump fuck Stormy Daniels. He was with two other women too in one weekend while Melania's at home with their babe. It's like, how are these psychos so aggressively horny? I don't right. get it. Um, so talking about how weird this election is going to be, and I don't know how this third, but like, like obviously, uh, besides Nicole Shanahan, uh, uh, Kennedy's bankrolled by a bunch of right-wing psycho billionaires who obviously their plan is to take more votes away from Biden and Trump, but I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't think anybody else does either. Um, but so in a bit of a, a weirdly good news, in a stunning upset in Alabama last week, a Democrat by the name of Marilyn Lands defeated Republican Teddy Powell in a special election for the Alabama State House District 10 uh, to fill a seat that was last held by a Republican who was indicted for, you, you want to guess, voter fraud. Uh, <laughs> with 99% of precincts reporting, she was uh, leading, uh, beating Powell by 25 points. Lands lost this election last cycle to Cole, the voter fraud guy, by seven points. Uh, it was a Trump, uh, so that made a 32-point swing in a Trump plus one district, all right? 
that's fucking insane. This is like this is out, outside of Mobile, so it's like it does, it's not it's more representative of the rest of America than it is Alabama because it's like educated people from uh, elsewhere who work in like for like NASA and tech and stuff. Mm. So it's like you can't be like, well, Alabama's turning blue. No, that 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 shouldn't be your takeaway here. Right. Uh, but she did run primarily on IVF rights following the state Supreme Court's uh, decision to uh, get rid of in vitro fertilization. Um, and the thing about this is also it came out of nowhere polling wise. Her huge victory because both campaigns showed the showed the race to be a dead heat, and the, Repub the Republican Powell's campaign said he was up by eleven points. So this is another like if you want to think the polling is all bullshit, here's one for your case. All right. I mean, I know you said don't look at this and say oh Alabama's turning blue, but the whole fact that she ran primarily on like abortion rights and IVF and all that stuff and everything that happened with IVF and in Alabama specifically recently, like, mm -hmm. and the context of the previous results from the, uh, the, the prior elections and how mm -hmm. lopsided they were compared to this result. I mean, that does seem to be indicative of something hopefully optimistic, right? <laughs> yeah. Some, something's happening here, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's my official take. Something's happening here. Yeah. Uh, and other something happening news. So the Florida Supreme Court yesterday simultaneously upheld the state's 15 week abortion plan, which the logic of which DeSantis just signed a six week, six week, six week abortion ban. So if the state Supreme Court says the Constitution does not forbid a 15 week abortion ban going to law, it's going to let the, it's going to let the six week law go into effect, too. Right. So they basically let a six week uh, abortion ban go into effect. Um, but they also simultaneously approved a ballot initiative that would amend the Florida Constitution to protect abortion. Um, they also approved yeah. a ballot initiative to legalize recreational weed, which is not the big thing here, but it does turn out a lot of young voters, which we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so the reality here before the politics, I don't want to just talk about the politics like, hey, this is good news for Democrats because it's going to mobilize voters because their rights have been taken away and a bunch of women have been immiserated. Because that's yeah, really right. the main thing here, right? Right. Um, a six-week abortion ban is not a six-week abortion ban because they kind of uh, women already know this, but for the for the male listeners we have, it's six weeks from your last period, which really means you would only have been suspecting you've been pregnant for two weeks. You might not even be testing positive yet. All right? right, and and so often, I mean, you don't even know. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, I mean, uh -huh. I knew a couple once that I didn't even know they were pregnant until way past that point. But it's like, and also it's like. Uh -huh. You know, they tell you, or at least I was told, we were told years ago, you know, don't even like tell people before 12 weeks or whatever, because it's not, you know, um, who knows what's going to happen and people don't even know what's going on. You're not showing yet. There's a million reasons why that is like uh, very overly restrictive and not realistic, which of course, like they know that it's like them trying to have their cake and eat it too, right? They're trying to be like, well, we're not outright banning it. We'll say this is okay, but that it realistically it doesn't ever happen that way or almost never happens that way so it, it in effect is an abortion ban which this i know shit, this doesn't even have to be said people know this but still like that's what they're doing this shit's so cynical like there technically is a rape and incest provision but you have to like bring a copy of the police report and i'm like have you talked to anybody about their, anybody about their experience with cops reporting sexual assault like they try to talk you out of reporting it so like right you basically got to get the guy convicted before you can secure an abortion you have six weeks to get this all done reality right. really two weeks so um, this is so this is bad. It's going to, uh, you know, damage or ruin a lot of women's lives and not just in Florida, because Florida sort of become like a refuge for people in surrounding red states to flee to to get abortions, um, uh, to get the medical care they need. I even say abortions because the, the abortion is like an umbrella term they use to describe a lot of different healthcare stuff. It's too complicated for them to sum up in a bill. So they just say the word abortion. Right. Um, the woman in Texas we talked about who went to the Supreme Court trying to get a judge to let her have the medical procedure she mm -hmm. needed ended up going to Florida to get it. Now she right. won't be able to do that. Right. Um, so the politics of this are going to be very weird. Uh, the Biden campaign is going to campaign hard in Florida, which may be, even if you making somebody play defense, <laughs> if the Trump campaign really thinks they need to play defense in Florida, draws away a lot of resources. Right. Everybody's played chess or, uh, you know, Warcraft knows what I'm talking about. Sure. Um, and resources that like, they have less of right that's another right. optimistic uh you know outlook recently is the yeah the dnc or the biden campaign or whatever is out raising trump yeah uh, they can afford lot, right they can afford to do uh to fuck around with him because at the start of march i got the numbers right here democrats had 155 million in the bank compared to 42 million available to trump's whole operation so yeah uh there uh so i think it's smart to campaign in florida because like not only does it make 
the abortion issue more salient in the general election, which is like, even though when you see polling that says the majority of people support are pro-choice, you got to wonder where that ranks in their priorities, right? right? Because if the border is above it, I can tell you how they're voting. Yes. Right. right. So like if, uh, um, so the, the, this making this about Florida, making their fight in Florida a lot, spent time in Florida, Biden spent time in Florida, turns a lot of TV coverage into being about Florida based issues. So you can tie Trump to like stuff like book bans, uh, we were in the state education system, this stupid six week abortion ban, uh, and uh, harassing L- 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 LGBTQ people, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff that Trump works his ass off to never fucking talk about when he's in public. Um, this initiative, so are going to, uh, and the weed, the, the abortion and weed, uh, initiatives are going to be on the ballot. You've got to get 60% approval to pass. Uh, it's the six, six week ban of polls around 20% approval rate. All right. Uh, university of North Florida poll in November found that 62% of respondents said they would vote yes on the abortion ballot measure. All right. That's the one to, uh, add a, add it to the state constitution. And I don't even need to see the polling on weed. All right. Yeah. Right. Uh, cause not only medical, medical marijuana is legal in Florida, but they did it in such a fashion to set it up as a racket. Right. They got every, every all their ducks in a row to be able to hand the business over the grow operations to like three guys who were their friends. And I remember seeing a joke from Florida State Legislature when they a legislator when they passed it, that the, the, the main requirement to get a license for a grow operation in Florida was to be related to a state legislator. I mean, right. dude, how how uh, common has that been across the various states? Because honestly, the way I as a cynical American, when I see these types of bills getting paid, I always assume it's something like that. But mm-hmm. the people that get, you know, that get in on the ground floor of legal weed and just making hand over fist that it's not your friendly neighborhood hippie weed man who's been in the mm-hmm. game for years and years. It's some senator's cousin or something that's got his papa's land or whatever and knows it's happening before it happens. I, mm-hmm. It just seems to me like that that's the most American way for that to go. And it would happen all the time. Like, is that isolated to Florida or it's just Florida, as is often the case, is like concentrated American badness. You know? <laughs> you, usually when I read about regulatory capture or like government corruption like this, usually a business starts and then the government figures out how to get their cut. The Florida weed stuff was the first time I've seen somebody figure out how to get their cut before legalizing something. So they already had cornered the market on it. Right. Like, like tax cap through lobbyists and stuff, tax, tax capture a lot of regulation, but they had to become a business first. Yeah. Right. Um, so like I've never I've never seen it really happen like this. And it, uh, so go back to abortion for a second. So asking Trump where he stands on this is he can't really yada yada his way around it because he is a Florida voter. Like he's going to vote on this mm-hmm. unless convicted felons. Right. Can't felons vote, can't Trey. Well, that, well, Chestnut Florida, checkers, baby. Florida <laughs> tried to make it to where they could. Right. But then they yeah. got shut down or reversed or something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, they they fuck they fuck Trump. Now he has to take a stance on this. He did say today he will make an announcement about about his state his position on the six week abortion ban soon. I'm assuming he'll just lie. But if you're wondering what the the, the math is here, in 2000 Trump beat Biden in Florida 51 48, only three points. Right now polling has Biden down six to eight. So when you think about that woman who was down 11 then one a blowout because of mm-hmm. abortion IVF, you could see why the Biden campaign thinks they have a shot here. Right. Uh, and there's, there's basically no map that where Republicans can win the presidency without Florida. So it's kind of the whole, unfortunately, going back to the 2000 election and Ralph Nader, yeah. unfortunately, except unfortunately it's the whole ball game, but for them this time. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a nice change. We're going to talk about Easter for a little bit. My yeah. Subjects. Yeah. So Sunday over the weekend, an intern working for the Joe Biden campaign or somebody Look through one of those calendars that shows what day it is. You know, it's like, you know, well, today's National Secretary's Day. It's National Hot Dog Day. It's trans, thir- Sunday was tran- National International Trans Visibility Day. All right. Mm-hmm. It's been that since 2009. It was like right. labeled that by activists who fought to get it recognized. Yes. And, uh, and so, and every, since 2009, Trans mm-hmm. Visibility Day has been March 31st mm-hmm. every year. Right. It don't move. It's always it doesn't March move. 31st. Easter don't, does it's move. It's important that it don't move. Yeah, because Easter, some days do move. Yeah. Easter is scheduled 
it's the first Sunday after the last full moon after the, the vernal equinox, equinox or whatever. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's complex. It covers a slate of like four to five weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. It could be every year around this general time frame. So yeah. Yeah. So uh so people got super mad about this and the way they're gonna talk about, it, but I just want to establish reality here for a second. It's International Trans Visibility Day. Joe Biden's not the president of international. And third. The president does not have the ability to cancel or reschedule Easter. Right. And fourth, Easter's not on March 31st every year. So just bear, the, bear those four realities in your head at the same time as you watch Jesse Waters on Fox News talk about this. So go figure. Permission to speak on behalf of the American people, Dana? Hmm. Do you? Yes, okay. Thank I was going to offer to hold your hand, but I think I'll take a pass. I think the trans thing is over. We have accommodated what? the trans for quite some time. No, They're you have it. Demanding nope. more visibility, Greg. Mm. The only thing more visible than the trans is Taylor Swift. Okay. Or All right. Why you, you is that? You know, like the, the whole re, the whole re, the whole the, to use their words, the trans thing. The whole reason it gets talked about as much as it does is because of them right. harping on it and persecuting these and not, they're the ones who won't let it go. I think permission to speak for trans people here, Mark. I think that they would <laughs> probably love it if y'all would keep their names out of your fucking mouths for a I while. Should've... They don't, they don't want you to be obsessing over them on every fucking nightly news show. And, and like you are the, y'all are the ones with the obsession. Y'all are the ones driving it. You're the reason it never goes away. And they get on her and act like, can we please just drop this finally? And it's like, That was okay, my first thought. Go ahead, I drop it. <laughs> I should have reached out to uh, a regular uh, uh, trans guy viewer, Sweet, Gwen Sweet Gwendolyn, a.k.a. drag queen name, uh, uh, Debbie Penetration, which always makes me laugh, uh, to see, like, would you like it if Jeffy Waters just fucking stopped talking about you guys? Right. And like, yes, I fucking... Of every course. Everybody would. It's like no one's asking for you to do this. Uh, <laughs> um, it wasn't just like this, like the, the it's not just seen Fox News. OK, let me read a couple of con Congress people for you. Uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, the Biden White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ by banning sacred truth and tradition, while at the same time proclaiming Easter Sunday as transgender day is outrageous and abhorrent. The American people are taking note. For one, Joe Biden posted a bunch of stuff about Easter, too. Like you said, happy Easter to people, my fellow Christians, all that kind right. of shit. All right, let me read. Here's Elise Stefanik. Uh, Joe Biden declares that Easter Sunday is Transgender Visibility Day while he bans Christian symbols from the White House Easter roll. Disgraceful. E Easter egg roll. Easter will forever be the celebration of Jesus Christ's resurrection. All right. Uh, MTV, MTG says some stupid shit, too. Let's talk about the Easter egg thing for a minute. Yeah. All right, because Sean Hannity went in on this. And I I, need, I want you to watch this before I explain to you how fucking stupid their panic about the eggs not having Christian symbols on them thing is or whatever. It was all but banned from the Biden White House. Even religious-themed painted eggs, they were strictly prohibited. <laughs> You can't make this up. You really can't. You're this making is it up. Simply hostility now <laughs> towards. You cut it, Matt. All right, so it, that is true, right? Technically, but as is often the case, there's additional context to this that they very conveniently leave yes. out when they the, the bitch about it. The guidelines for the contest in which kids submit decorated eggs for a White House display specify that the art quote, must not include any questionable content, religious symbols, overtly religious themes, or partisan political statements. But those rules come from the American Egg Board, which administers <laughs> the contest, has confirmed that the guidelines have not changed since the late 1970s. Not only is Joe Biden not the president of International, he's not the president of the American fucking Egg Board. Bro, All the right? American Egg Board, every now and then I hear about the existence of something, I'm like, that's been here the whole time? How do you get a, <laughs> how do you get a, how do you get a gig on that? You know what I mean? I ain't got the schooling for that. I'm trying to get on the Diplomatic Cheese Bro. Council. You know what I mean? Like the American Egg Board, it's hilarious do you know they, <laughs> Do you know they invented breakfast? <laughs> Uh, like big, big, big egg, big yeah, egg, and eggs, breakfast. Yeah, there weren't enough egg sales, so they did a Marty campaign. They made eggs the bre food for breakfast. That wasn't a real until like the nineteen. So like breakfast being the most important meal of the day. That's big egg. That's literally big egg. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's fantastic. Hey, look, they're not wrong. Eggs are great for. Breakfast. I love eggs. I yeah. love what I love what they're doing over there at Big Egg yeah. Incorporated. So you know, the chairman of the American Egg Board, he's doing a okay by me because I, I mean, you know, I need to bring the goddamn prices down a little bit. Am I right, people? But yeah, they're doing pretty good. But this is all like a failure of civics education because, like, the president. Like I think we all know the separation of church and state. The president can't proclaim. The president can't proclaim an official religious holiday. That's right. kind of the whole point of this country. I know that too. Joe that's Biden can neither establish nor cancel Easter. I know that's another thing I thought while watching all these clips and them freaking out about it or whatever. And I know it's not new or anything coming from them, but it's like, I, is it not a founding principle of this country that church and state should be separated? You know what I mean? Like, so you bitching about the president not loving Jesus enough on his day of resurrection or whatever is should be a complete non-starter but of course but i mean of course you know we all know that they want it to be an actual christian theocracy so it's not weird that they do that but it's still bullshit yeah. though right and if it's like but like most people even if the majority of people even want to vote republican would don't want a theocracy but they but a lot of people do it do seem to think that the president schedules easter or something like I, yeah. I remember reading a piece is 2015. I think I know I mentioned this before, um, but like it was Super Bowl weekend, and they were talking to the people about like ideas, like how it's a very popular idea to get the Monday after Super the Super Bowl off. Mm -hmm. And this guy was like, "This seems like the kind of thing that a president outside the box thing that a President Trump could get done." It's like the president does not have the authority to schedule the fucking Super Bowl or give you Monday off because you're hungover. Right. You're the party of personal responsibility, man. I don't know. Start getting drunk earlier in the day and pass out at night. Yeah, uh, sounds kind of big governmenty to me, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but I don't know how to argue with people who think that the president has the authority to reschedule Easter or is the king of the American egg board. All right, yeah. I just don't like it's not. So, so none of this is really new or different, but there's one way to deal with it, and Fox News figured it out. And it's just to edit fucking reality. This is like uh, the White House spokesman, uh, uh, Jean, uh, Kristen Jean Pierre. Is that her name? Kristen, yeah, that's the Jean Pierre. Pierre. Yeah. Uh, uh, was asked about this, and she gave an answer that owned Fox News, but they only showed the first part of the clip. And here's what that looked like in reality. There's a mashup that um, uh, Media Matters did with the full clip and the clip they showed uh, on Fox. Such total disrespect to Christians. And That's the wrong clip, November Matt. 5th is... Yeah, uh, you, never mind. You don't have to show that. This is the clip I was asking for right there. All right, so... Uh, Trump campaign, which you can leave that a clip up, Max. We'll just get to it in a second. What what Christine uh, Jean Pierre, Christine Jean Pierre said was Korean, I think, or Korean, I don't Korean know Jean Pierre. Right. Sorry, Korean, yeah, yeah, Korean, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, said we were at we were at first. I want to be clear, confused on their coverage. We're grateful that Fox agrees with the president Biden recognizing Trans Day of visibility. Back in 2021, they tweeted Trans Day of visibility is dedicated to celebrating trans. The White House people. also coming. Matt, don't show it now. <laughs> we're just it's too late. So. They they tweeted the Fox News tweeted that Trans Day of Visibility is dedicated to celebrating transgender people to all the transgender men, uh, men women and non -binary, non binary folks. They spelled folks with an X. Fox News did that woke shit. We see you. All right. So um, they just fucking lied about their own position about their history or whatever. They just edited. They just showed the first part of her clip where she was defending the Biden White House, not the part where she pointed out that Fox News is also posted about Trans Visibility Day. Um, Trump, as for Trump, he his campaign cried blasphemy. This is the guy who's selling fucking mark, usually marked up Bibles with the words changed in it. Blasphemy. Uh, he deplored the Biden White House's years long assault on the Christian faith and bizarrely urged an apology to quote Catholics and Christians. Perhaps a dog <laughs> whistle to those Trump supporters who believe Catholics not to be Christians. We're doing the some old fucking yeah. bigotries. Catholics now. and Christians, both people, white people mm. and crackers, all y'all come in. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. But I mean, no, you're right. Yes, there's like, you know, there's a definitely certain subsects of Christianity that don't don't view Catholics as real Christians. I'm sure that works in, in reverse, too, I would imagine. I mean, like Catholics are like, aren't they like the OG Christians? Or they were like, you know, the biggest ones for a long time, but they're not. Well, legit. I mean, I've never understood the whole Christian infighting, really, because I'm Bible dumb. But yeah, it's definitely a thing. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, Martin Luther and his seven theses in there, but like it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a whole thing. And if you uh, you can, you can say, do Catholics think that uh, Protestants are really Christians? Uh, 
I don't know, let's go visit Ireland between 1600 and <laughs> 2005. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we talked about how you spent your Easter. I'll tell you how I spent mine. All right. I, I don't, not a huge celebrant, but I, you know, had a nice relaxing day. I worked out, grocery shop, watched some basketball, went to a friends for dinner. It was a nice day. My mom, who is very religious, she went to sunrise service. Then they had breakfast at church. Then they had regular church service. And then she came home and made dinner for the whole family. Had the ham, scalloped potatoes, rolls, you know, green stuff. You know, you know what green stuff, water, watercress salad curry? hits. Amazing. My mom made all that for my, for, for my, for my niece. That's how Trump spent his day. The ostensible avatar for American Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, he threatened the judge's daughter. <laughs> yes. Violating Definitely a gag order. Definitely what Jesus would do. I think we uh, all agree. <laughs> he reposted an image of Joe Biden. Somebody painted their truck up to like Joe Biden was bound and gagged in the bed of the truck. He reposted yeah, that, that on Easter. Uh, he posted more than 70 times before like 10 a.m. on, on uh, Easter morning when a lot of people were at church. Um including one in which he bragged about beating Michelle Obama in a potential electoral matchup. Uh, Matt already threw up his Easter message. If you want to throw it back up there, Matt, I'll read it to you. Happy Easter to all, including crooked and corrupt prosecutors and judges that are doing everything possible to interfere with the presidential election and put me in prison. Uh, yeah, it goes on for a long time, but you get it. You get the gist. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, every single holiday has the same holiday message. It's always happy holidays to everybody, even the crooked dipshit libtards that are ruining this goddamn country and trying to put me in jail. Even them, happy. I hope they die in a fire, but mm-hmm. happy Easter to them and y'all. Like, yeah, I mean, he, he kind of goes back to the same playbook every every holiday mm-hmm. season. But yeah, did you say seventy po? I don't know why that surprised. 70s a lot, dude. I, don't, I get carpal tunnel. I know. God, God damn. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Even our, our buddy, senior Georgia correspondent, Corey Forrester, even when he's drunk on Twitter arguing with people, I don't know if he tweets 70 times in, in that same time frame. Like, that's fucking extreme. Yeah, he got a couple weeks ago, uh, he, had, he had a few drinks at his son's first birthday party sure and they did. got on Twitter and wrote a thread about Sydney Sweetie's titties. <laughs> so, <laughs> he sure did. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, he also, Trump also shared two links. Uh, he, well, two links to one article by Wayne Allen Root, longtime conservative uh, uh, writer uh, touting the Trump miracle where he, he didn't mean miracle in metaphorical sense. He thinks what happened is supernatural that Trump is the chosen one by God. Uh, Trump also shared a link to an article titled The Crucifixion of Donald Trump. Uh, there's like a whole, um, uh, you know, commandment about false idols. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is a, Trump gave a speech today, uh, this afternoon, I think he was in Wisconsin, where he talked about this. And here's the video you, were, uh, you, you showed a little bit ago, Matt, if you can pull it back up with Trump talking. Such total disrespect to Christians and... November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Finally, the Christians will get their day in the United States of America. You know, they're so hard. I always, I look around and wonder, like, where are all the Christians? Where, Where have the Christians been hiding? Are they repressed? You know, we never see Christian iconography or beliefs shoved in our faces all the goddamn time. Uh, but so finally someone's doing something about that. <laughs> someone's finally standing up for, again, it's old news that Christians have a persecution complex and genuinely somehow have allowed themselves to believe that they are the most oppressed subgroup of people in this country, despite being the ones who do all the oppressing. But, you know, here we are. That's the thing that kills me. And like, we, we talked about how Jason Aldean did try that a small town. Doesn't actually live in a small fucking town. Has never lived in one. I don't even see the church attendance breakdowns for people that self-identify, self-identify as evangelicals, but they don't actually go to fucking church. All right. Of course. Yeah. They just worship Trump. That's the right. thing about this. It's like, 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 like don't, when I disagree with you about like, you know, like organized religion and stuff is like, even though I don't, I'm not a believer, like it's like religion is like any other human institution. It can be corrupted or not. It can be good, used for good in people's lives or not. And I look at it like right. what it does for a mom was it brings her solace and peace to go sp- hang out with our church community and sing some songs and hold hands and say yes. hi and give, give each other love and support. And then she minds her own business and she, yes. she helps out the poor people in the community like a church is supposed to do, donates money to causes through the church, you know, and I'm talking about like 
culture war causes, I mean like food pantries and stuff, right? Yes. So no, like, dude, no, I'm not. All that, yeah. I'm more, I'm more uh, hardcore about it, I guess, than you are generally. But I, everything you just said, I also agree. With. I've had arguments with ace, the atheist, hardcore atheists on their podcast and stuff about the same thing, except talking about my mama instead of your mom. Mm -hmm. Same deal. It's like, I, yeah, I got no problem with that. That's fine. And and you know, uh, right. It's just that it's so often and you know, consistently corrupted <laughs> in so many cases in this country that it is kind yeah. of hard to separate the two, but you're right. There is a completely uh, acceptable version of it that I don't have any kind of problem I, with. If they were, I mean, it's like the, there was an old quote from like a Dalai Lama from a few years ago or somebody like that. The, the quotes of, you know, uh, I like your Christ. I don't like your Christians. They are so unlike your Christ or whatever. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if they, like if more Christians in this country were actually, legitimately christ-like then christianity would hit for me it's just that so many of them that's, are not you know that's, that's the part i was getting to is what kills me is like like my mom is very christian she lives according to what christians profess as their values and she does not feel a persecution complex right. whereas these people who are only christian when they fill out a, a polling survey feel persecuted even they live they live nothing <laughs> they, they right. live no religion in their life uh and I know <laughs> I wanted to briefly mention, I know we're running out of time, but there, this fake right wing panic isn't just silly. Like what you're doing here is building up a permission structure. Um, it's like I read this article earlier today, fake, this fake right wing panic about trans Easter is part of Trump's push for Christian nationalism. Embedded in all this performative outrage is an argument. It's justified for Republicans to adopt Christian nationalism even and even fascism on the grounds of self-defense. The supposed threats to Christianity are so great, the thing goes, the only way to protect the faith is to end religious liberty and democracy. So if you want to overthrow Joe Biden to pretend to, to defend Easter, you must first pretend that Joe Biden is trying to abolish Easter and replace it with, I don't know, a trans person as in, in the place of Christ, as opposed to the Easter bunny, who's merely a very straight boy bunny that lays pink eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's all just so fucking disturbing. And like, like Trump when he, in his Bob lab, by the way, he talked about Christians being under siege and the only way to quote, protect anything that is pro God is through force. And he said, we must make America pray again. Now I know it's a play on make America great again. And he even kind of slant rhymes, but if you take him at his word, <laughs> they're going to make people pray using state force to a Christian God. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why anybody would want to do that because you can't make anybody mean it. And going back to your whole Catholic versus Protestant thing, it's Jesus knows what's in your heart, buddy. So I don't even know what the point of it is. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've said it a million times before over the years, but like early on, one of the only things I somewhat kind of sort of respected about Donald Trump was I got the impression that he didn't even waste time trying to front like he was christian or jesus -y or whatever like early on in his rise i mean it's like that's that was like one of the only things he didn't really bullshit about and i was like i at least got to give him that you know and then, and then he, he realized turned from that to this and i get why it's because he's a, the prototypical narcissist and he's these people have propped him up as being the chosen one or whatever so he's playing right into it and mm -hmm. paying directly to it and i understand all that but it's just you know it's it's upsetting yeah, and it's like it's so weird to me because there's a, a famous anecdote in one of the one of his biographies um, where during the campaign in 2015 uh, or 2016, sorry, uh, he was they arranged a meeting with him with evangelical leaders. They walked him in, introduced them. He knew they were evangelical. And he goes, "Well, you guys are Christian too, right?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I said it was from a Dalai Lama from a while ago. That's funny because Sandy Trunks points out that the quote I was saying is from Mahatma Gandhi. That old guy. Yeah, we remember him. He was cool too. Quote, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. I got the quote pretty right. I just somehow forgot. I was like, yeah, it was, it was some guy from over there, you know. Anyway, Martha C. Sim says Biden, who is actually a practicing actual Christian, I mean, that's like Obama, you know, Obama went and like led the, that church in Charleston after the Dylan Roof massacre and, and Amazing Grace and all that stuff and get caught, got called a secret Kenyan Muslim or whatnot, while Donald Trump, the guy who couldn't name a book from the Bible without doing it erroneously, is being propped up as the, the one and only. Holy he went Coast to Liberty Man. University and called it two Corinthians. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Connie Stating says, make America pray again. Gives me chills, creepy chills. Yeah. Don't wait for me either. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. All right. Go ahead, Mark. I, I really like people like, uh, you know, want to hear more optimism. My optimistic thing is I don't think this shit fucking plays for the world majority of people, not even Christians who don't need the state to force other people to agree with them. I just in my heart <laughs> believe we're a stronger, smarter country than that. And our founding values. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I hope you're right. That mm-hmm. used to always be my stance uh, before 2016, which for a lot of people. But, but before that year, I was always like, no, I truly believe in my heart that we are better than that at the end of the day. And then ever since then, I was like, I don't know, maybe we're not. But I, I would like to think that that's the case for sure. I know, but you but you saw even people on the left and liberals saying like uh, like like when like Hillary saying that they're going to get we get get rid of Roe versus Wade that that was fear mongering. I think people have touched the hot stove now. Even yeah. people that thought they wanted what Trump was promising saw what it looked and felt like and like like Madison. So I mean, I know the poll is the poll is, mm-hmm. and uh, if 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 it goes the other way. I want to be heartbroken and I'll never make predictions. I guess I would be wrong for what I'm saying now, but I'm just guessing and vibing right now. So I don't, I'm not really, guessing I'm not really and vibing, but that's what we do yeah. here at weekly skews. Everybody mm-hmm. join us next week for more of it. Let's go to tradecrowder.com. Check out my upcoming tour dates. Check out me and Corey's book on there. I'll see y'all in Vancouver and Seattle in a couple of weeks. It's going to be fun and go to weekly slash more or go on Patreon and search for my name. Sign up on there, $5 a month. Get some more SKUs in your life and support the show in the process. We appreciate it. The main thing is keep coming back despite our technical difficulties. Every SKUs, D, and we'll be here too. We'll see you in seven days. Love you. Bye. SKUs.